palliative medicine is a medical specialty that has gained, I think, more momentum in the last several years, much to your point, um, that really provides a layer of support to patients and their families who are navigating serious chronic illnesses while they are pursuing curative treatments. Oh, for example, let's say you're uh, diagnosed with um, chronic or advanced heart failure. So these patients would often have their specialist, a cardiologist, as well as their primary care physician. Um, but it is a chronic and progressive illness that we know is not curable and people can live with for a long time with medical treatment. Um, our role in that is to support the patient and family, not with just the new diagnosis, because it can often be very overwhelming. Uh, I don't care how smart you are or how many times you hear it, um, it reinforcement's always a good thing. And I often tell people that palliative care is like the story of your health. We're going to talk about where you are, how you got here, and where do you want to go, and how can we help you do that. So, and, and Christina may want to add to this too, but I think the 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 one of the many advantages of palliative care it really is patient-centered, but family-centered too, because we know that patients who live with these chronic illnesses, I mean, they wake up every day with some kind of reminder that they have cancer, heart failure, lung disease, d dementia, Parkinson's, whatever, and it doesn't just affect them. It affects everyone who, uh, it was not, maybe not their family, but who supports them. So we do a lot of... Um, intermittent maybe conversations. I mean, these conversations that we have with people, it's not a one and done. Um, it's, it's more of, we will talk to you and see you as needed throughout the progression of your disease. Because remember, we, we never take over the care of these patients. They need their specialists for a reason to help kind of manage the illness. But we are very good at helping put the big picture together. Because honestly, most people, especially with the advancement in medical care, people are living longer and better than they ever did with mm -hmm. chronic illnesses. And as we age, we tend to accumulate more chronic illnesses. So those get very difficult to kind of keep in check. And I think that's one of the, the things that's so amazing about our providers is that they are expert at kind of putting this big picture together. You know, a big piece of what we do is communication and having hard, having hard conversations often. Um, it is a certain skill set uh, that we possess in that level of communication with patients and their families. Because oftentimes, you know, the big questions are, what is happening to me? Uh, what can I expect for the future? Um, is this normal? How do mm -hmm. I get more prepared about this? Um, and you, you know, certain levels of emotion start to rise that are very common in any patient or family dealing with this. And it's um, anxiety about the future, mm -hmm. grief, even though their loved one is still here. Um, and also just a matter of giving them a sense of control in these, in these conversations to really frame how they want the rest of their life to look like, no matter how long that is going to be. Really it's just knowing, you know, information is, is power for people and many, not power in the way that they're going to wield it, but, but it's more like they're losing so much when these chronic illnesses start to take over their life. They lose power of a lot of things, mm -hmm. information, education, support. Um, is, is huge when it comes to them feeling like they have some control over what's happening. I think probably one of the, the, my biggest satisfactions that, is that people often will say, no one has ever talked to me like this before. And I tell people all the time, no one will talk to you like a palliative care provider. Um, they know how to kind of, um, you know, pick up on cues and how far to go, but the conversations we have are, are great. And I've, uh, as, as much as people say they never want to talk about these things, I've never had anyone say they sorry they did it. It's always, why didn't we have this conversation before? And I'm not talking about death and dying. Yeah. I'm just talking about living, you know, and, and how can we help them do that the best that they can for as long as possible. Improves quality of life for patients and families by addressing the physical symptoms as well as the emotional well-being I think it provides a sense of control back on the patient and family, which emotionally, organically will increase their well-being. Um, it provides a framework and time that's really carved out into educating them about what's happening in their disease process. Knowledge to me is huge power. Um, I think in that comes control. And I think that really allows some autonomy and able to predict sort of what's happening and what they want their lives to look like. 
We do identify resources that they may benefit from. Um, you know, for instance, even if I think it's appropriate for physical therapy and occupational therapy to be involved, you know, I will make those recommendations. Um, identifying resources in the community, a lot of people don't know where to even start. Um, so those are just some of the examples of that. And then of course, helping them through the emotional journey. Um, it's often very common for patients to deal with anxiety, depression, and a lot of these emotions. And so we, we address those as well.